CPI, inflation, what's the difference? Well, they're kind of the same thing. One feeds through to the other. CPI, or the Consumer Price Index, is a measure that is tracked by the Australian Bureau of Statistics and it is used to make up the inflation figure. The inflation figure is what the Reserve Bank of Australia uses to determine their monetary policy settings in their monthly meetings, or the official cash rate as it's known. The CPI is made up of a basket of goods that Australians will purchase on a regular basis. The change in price of these basket of goods will flow through to the CPI figure. All right, so let's have a look at what makes up said basket. Okay, here we have the table that shows what makes up a basket of goods. You can see all the items down here, weighted average of eight capital cities and all the groups. And over here we have the quarterly change due to September and over here we have the annual change. So you can see the main rate here, the headline rate is 1.6 for the quarter, 0.7 for the year. Food, alcohol, clothing, housing, etc. The trimmed mean, 0.4, that's what the RBA will use. 1.2 for the annual. Note that it doesn't include assets such as land and stocks. And because the RBA sets interest rates based on an inflation target range of 2 to 3%, we've had a situation at times where low interest rates have encouraged a bubble in asset prices such as housing and the stock market. But because these things are not included in the CPI calculation, the bubble has been allowed to run unchecked. Not to say that assets should be included in the price of goods. The point here is just to say that asset price bubbles can be a byproduct of the RBA policy mandate. But then in theory, asset prices should flow through to the basket of goods and services by way of what's referred to as the wealth effect. This basically means that when house prices go up or a stock portfolio goes up in value, people are getting richer on paper and they are starting to feel wealthier. And this means they are more likely to go out and spend their discretionary money on the new couch, the TV, the car, whatever it may be. And then all that increased spending that is taking place across the economy should in turn push up prices, which will increase inflation. It looks to be that achieving full employment will actually carry more weight around the boardroom table for the foreseeable future. Okay, so what is full employment? Full employment is the unemployment rate where the supply of workers and the demand for workers is in equilibrium. When unemployment falls below the full employment unemployment rate, it generally causes wages to increase. This is because the supply of workers has now fallen below the demand for workers, or to put it another way, there's not enough people to fill jobs. Traditionally, the full employment rate was considered to be around 5%, but it's generally believed now that it is lower than that. Um, this has been due to a number of factors, some of them being the casualization of the workforce and the rise of the gig economy. Okay, back to the CPI. So we're looking at inflation. There is the headline rate, also called the core rate. Um, this is the rate that is reported in the media. There's also the trimmed mean. The trimmed mean is the rate that the RBA uses when determining its monetary policy settings. This one will take out any outlier results, the big falls or the big increases that tend to skew the results so that it provides a steadier tool to the RBA when determining the interest rate. And then there is a quarterly rate, which can also be annualized on a seasonally adjusted basis or the actual annual on annual change. And now we have a chart here showing the all group CPI quarterly change. You can see there was a big decrease here that was mostly due to childcare becoming free for a period of time. And then here there was a big increase as lockdowns generally finished around the country and childcare became a cost to families once again. Okay, it's easy to view inflation as a bad thing especially if you're holding cash, it can be. No one likes their purchasing power being eaten up by inflation. Um, you know, you can buy a can of Coke for $1.50 now, but in a year's time, it might cost you $1.60. So no one likes that. Um, but the general view is by economists that a little bit of inflation is a good thing because it tends to push on the economy and encourage activity in the economy. And this is why the RBA targets a small amount of inflation rather than no inflation. All right, guys, that's it. Just a quick one here. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. If you want to see more, please subscribe. Catch you later.